Hey folks, Turbine Guy coming back at you. Now today, I want to talk about how to run the wiring for a N-phase microinverter system on your solar system like I have here. When I have technical questions I need answered, Turbine Guy always refers to the latest version of the National Electric Code for installing your solar system and electric components like I have behind me here. Be sure to check your local building regulations and obtain whatever electrical and building permits you need for that system. There's two main aspects to it. One is the grounding and the other is running the power leads down to the uh, combiner box. We've got one, two, three, four rows and each row is considered one integral unit because the mounting bolts we used are grounding bolts. So all these mounting bolts are grounding everything together. So each row is gonna need its own ground lug. I started on this one and grabbed this one for the first two rows. And then we come up and I did the same for the next two rows here and here. Now I run this up and over the roof to the other string and down to the combiner box and we'll see that in just a minute. Okay, aspect two is running the power leads. Each uh, N-phase microinverter system ends up with a positive and a positive coming out. There is no neutral. What we end up doing is what I did here. So I got the wire from the end of my string coming into the box. And I grabbed some 12-gauge wire, THHN, nutted it together, and, and ran it up for this string. Now one thing to note is that in the boxes... Down in the corner there, I put weep holes in the downhill area just in case some water does happen to get in there. It's got somewhere to go to get out. So now if we come up for the second string, we've got the same thing. Positive and a positive coming out, and we can see that the other string, the 12 gauge from there, is just running right through it. Now as I run this up the roof, you can see I've got it elevated here. And they do sell actual conduit mounts. I didn't happen to have any. So all I did was took some green treat, one buys, drilled some holes through it, and mounted these all into the roof. And I did it with some uh, typical sealant as I went, rough sealant, to make sure that I don't have any water leaks. When you're talking about a long run with PVC tube, you might be worried about flexing, especially in a hot area. And they do sell sliders. That's why you may want to consider doing EMT for it so you don't have to run the ground wire too. So if you want to run EMT, that's fine. It's just as easier for me. Plus when we come up, I got a nice little bend here. So I got plenty of room for everything to flex. Now as we follow the conduit, we come down and realize that my ground wasn't long enough. So what I did was, I ran the ground through each way and then wire nutted it together. So it's tuck this guy out of the way and we keep going with the ground. Now I run that ground all the way down to the combiner box and we'll see that in a minute. Now for my last string here, I've got the same thing. A positive and a positive coming out, run into 12 gauge and then the other two strings, four wires, just run right through this box. Well, let's get down to the side of the house and let's see how this stuff all hooks up. Well, I ran the wires through the conduit down the side of the house and into the end phase combiner box through the disconnect and the production meter. And you need to remember to get all your labels on the solar circuits. This is a new one. They definitely want on the disconnect that says rapid shutdown. You also got to have your voltage and amperage noted. And then this is new as well. Most utilities are going to some sort of plaque of the site. It's a site diagram that shows where the solar is located as well as where the disconnects are. So it's easy if there's a fire for the firemen to find what's going on and shut everything down quick. Now, when we open the combiner box, we can see that I got the ground wire running down in and connecting. And from here on out, instead of being on the outside of the conduit, the ground wires run on the inside of everything. We also notice that each breaker has two hots coming into it and there are three 20 amp breakers, one for each string. Also a 10 amp breaker for the envoy up there that pulls power off the house in order to run the envoy. Last but not least, let's remember that our six gauge hots going out also have a neutral that goes all the way down through the rest of the system. So although you don't have any neutrals coming in to the breakers from the strings, you do have to deal with a neutral going out. So our wires come down and through, and next spot is the disconnect. 
Now on the disconnect, you want to make sure to hook up the wires coming from the solar array to the bottom of the disconnect. You also want to make sure that the wire is coming in from the production meter or the house are going through the top of the disconnect if it's fused. The reason being, if the fuse goes and you have to fix that and you turn this off, you're disconnecting the top, which is the power coming from the grid, which will shut down the solar. If you do it the other way and the power comes in this way and you shut it off, these fuses are still gonna be running hot from the grid and that's a dangerous situation. So make sure when you run this, solar power goes in the bottom, the grid goes in the top and a fuse disconnect. Then from the disconnect, we run over to the production meter. We go into the top of this production meter comes out the bottom and then these three all run into the house be sure to torque all your connections in here to the proper torque one last note we can see the ground comes in from the disconnect and the ground goes out to the house well let's go to the basement and see what we have down there all right well i ran the wires through a flexible conduit because when you're running thhn wires you got to run them through conduit to get them into the top of the panel and then I come down and I run it into a 40 amp breaker. Now this is a 200 amp panel. It's important for you to calculate what size breaker. Typically you can't use larger than a 40 amp breaker in a 200 amp panel. Don't forget, got to label which breaker it is so when you're working on the system you know what to shut down. There you have it folks. That's how to wire an end phase inverter system on your solar power system. Turbine Guy says, we'll see you next time. Turbine Guy here, and if you want to install your own solar system DIY and you want some help designing it and need the system supplied, give me a call at 952-334-6400 or visit the website gogreenenergyonline.com.